This is your UOW Update, I'm Ben Neutzer. Young refugees from countries across the world have put their school books aside to perfect their hip-hop moves. Tanya Dendrinos has more. This group of young dancers met through a homework help centre run by SCARF, who in collaboration with the Multicultural Communities Centre of the Illawarra, saw their passion for dance turn into reality. We worked together to organise a teacher from Street Beats, for them and now they're preparing for a performance at Viva La Gong. The hip hop crew recently named themselves One Step. It's symbolic of learning one dance step at a time but also um, all different cultures coming together but being united as one. The dancers are thankful for the opportunity. Hip hop class is a great thing to do because you learn new stuff every day and you get to like, do stuff that you couldn't believe you can do. It's just awesome and you get to see your friends and you get to dance hip hop. This is nothing. Organisers say the classes provide the group with a new means of self expression. It's not just the fitness and the fun of it, but it's being able to come together for something outside of school and outside of their home duties. They will perform four dances at Viva La Gong on the 10th of November. Tanya Dendrinos, UOW TV. UOW researchers are looking into the effect of cannabis on mental health. They're discovering more about the possible link between marijuana usage and psychosis. It seems that some of the variability in the experiences people have after smoking cannabis may be accounted for by variations in personality. Researchers have put together a website with questionnaires and games designed to compare reactions between users and non-users. We know that there's a link there, but we aren't sure why. We know cannabis doesn't seem to be bad for everyone, but there's certainly a subset of people that cannabis has fairly detrimental effects upon. And what we're trying to do is identify those individuals prior to them actually using cannabis eventually, so they can make informed decisions about their recreational drug use. Traditional Chinese medicine has been used to treat disease for thousands of years, but is only now becoming more mainstream in the Western world. Chinese researchers have teamed up with locals at UOW to determine the effectiveness of traditional methods in reducing diabetes risk factors. A long history of clinical evidence shows that traditional Chinese medicine and herbs are safe and effective. Researchers are looking at the use of traditional herbs such as tea and rosemary. A olive leaf extract is actually available at the chemist which contains one of the compounds I'm looking at, so it's readily available. It's just that it hasn't been marketed as a, a, a westernised drug. Faculty of Creative Arts third year performance students will be ending their studies with two of Moliere's works, including the classic comedy Don Juan. Directed by lecturer Chris Ryan, the production drags the 17th century play into the modern era. Don Juan is the, the ultimate um, seducer, uh, and he's got an offsider who's the ultimate loser. I play the role of Charlotte, and she's one of Don Juan's sexual conquests. The graduating production will be performed this weekend at PACT, a professional theatre in Erskineville. It's their last show uh, in the institution, and so it's a goodbye. It's also a combination of all their uh, skills. The UOW Queer Collective will celebrate the end of this session with a party at Unibar on Friday night. It's going to be a Halloween party because it's in the same time. There's going to be like um, costume competitions and really cool prizes. The party comes at the end of a massive year for the collective, which saw it join the push for marriage equality. Squash players from around the globe have gathered en masse in an attempt to enter the record books. Lakeside Leisure Centre among the many to make sure World Squash Day was a smash hit in the Illawarra. Simon Anderson has more. Squash players from throughout the Illawarra gathered in Canahooker at the weekend to not only try and enter the record books, but to help take the sport they love to the big stage. Events have been held across the world as part of World Squash Day in a bid to have the sport included in the 2020 Olympic Games. We've got 40 comp players here playing in teams of 20, 20 point games, so the whole configuration is 20. For the 2020 Olympics, submissions being put in. Um, we're in the Commonwealth Games, but the Olympic Games is the, is the main aim of today. The players are all there to see the game they love get more exposure, but the reasons they love the game are all different. 
team sport obviously is critical as you're growing up as a kid, but when you get into, uh, when you get older and you want to get serious about sports, sometimes the effort you want to put in doesn't match the effort of your teammates. So therefore, to balance out your competitiveness, sometimes you need to get into an individual type sport where it's all about your effort, your training, your stroke play, and squash is about that. It's just the unique nature of the game, interaction with the people, the social nature of it. It's just. I guess you get a passion for something and then you're in the niche. Despite the record attempt and the Olympics bid, World Squash Day is also about getting more people involved in the sport. The Olympics is, is the key to it, um, but the spin-off is that squash being a forgotten sport, just to remind people that the squash is still around, it can be a lot of fun. Simon Anderson, UOW TV. I'm Ben Neutzer, that's UOW Update for this week and for the year. Good luck with final assessments and exams and all the best for those about to graduate.